but I'd like to welcome you to the 10th Annual Writers Guild Banquet. Uh, we're starting out a little bit, well, a lot of you are familiar with CD time, but don't, don't, don't blame me too much. Uh, all right, uh, we're going to get started. Uh, Mr. Andre, you're going to come up and play a song for us? And uh, we're going to bring on our rest of our talent. Uh, some of our acts uh, won't be here today, but uh, I think we will have some suitable entertainment for you. And we uh, want to give you a, an event uh, that you will, how you say, treasure for life, think about for life, like the song, love you for life. You about ready? All right, um, let's, let's get, uh, we'll, 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 let me, we'll, we'll, I want to get my program together and so I can be looking at a program and that kind of thing. Miss, uh, Miss Marcia, would you bring up a program? Well, a brief history uh, about the Writers Guild. This is our 10th year and uh, our first year we met at the Rosen Plaza and uh, a lot of, uh, my friends and supporters uh, who were there at that time uh, are still with us today. Uh, so if any of you guys were here 10 years ago, just say, just, just uh, wave your hand or holler for us. If you were here 10 years ago, Miss Gwen. Uh, we're ready. Uh, you guys were here 10 years. All right, then, Miss Gwen. Uh, with the Phoenix group, uh, her daughter Roz Reggie, uh, Mr. Roger Caldwell, uh, who wrote the, uh, the story of uh, a stroke survivor. And uh, so uh, it's, been, uh, it's been real, real good. Uh, I'm gonna try not to say R too many times. I know, I know I'll get, get that. All right, well, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to be a little better. Just uh, we're gonna try to YouTube this, so I will try to do my proper New York accent. Uh, all right. Um, since our regular talent didn't come, uh, we'll have uh, Miss Gwen Bennett introduce our speaker. Not our speaker, but our MC for the, the day, Mistress of Ceremony. Let me, see, let me get that right. I'm a little nervous, I guess you guys can tell. Um, all right. Coming up to the mic next is one of my partners in crime, longtime friend, Miss Gwen Benet Gray. Welcome everyone to the 10th Annual Writers Guild. Think about that, that is fabulous. And many of us, like Ted said, have come to all 10. So we're hanging tough. Uh, this is uh, kind of, what do you call, impromptu, but it's not strange for me to be uh, presenting a very dear friend and a friend of the community, Dr. Pam Powell known as the P Factor, AKA the Hope Doctor. She's a minister, a celebrity speaker, TV and radio personality, life coach, producer, author of two books, and now an actress being filmed in the anti-bullying film called AMRAC. She was also recently signed with a professional modeling, premier modeling management, she motivates, she inspires, she empowers people from all walks of life and globally. Help me welcome, and most of you, from Orlando, because she, I gotta add, she didn't put this there, but she's a born, you know, born and raised Orlando, and that's hard to find, I find, from not being from Orlando. So I think that's a little badge of honor right there. So I'd like to bring to you Dr. Pam Powell.
Thank you so much to my dear friend and colleague for so many years, Ms. Gwen Bennett Gray. Y'all give her another big hand. I am just honored to be here amongst all of you. We have so many, I would call VIPs in the room right now, and I'm just honored because writers make a difference in our lives. If y'all agree with that, come on, give a big hand to all writers. And some of you in this room have a book inside of you that you need to write. And I challenge you to make sure you write that book because something has happened in your life where you can inspire so many people like the Honorable Commissioner Mabel Butler is doing and several of you that have gathered here today. But I want to bring up the host of the event, the founder of this awesome organization again so that we can give him a standing ovation. I'm talking about none other than Mr. Ted Hollins. Because in 2002, Ted Hollins had a vision. He brought people together. He talked to them about writing books and things. He began to have more and more meetings. And from those meetings, this organization, the Orlando Renaissance Writers Guild, was formed. And that is an incredible thing to do to bring people together, to bring great minds together, to go out and motivate people to write books. And right now, I understand there's over 100 plus authors that have developed books because of Mr. Ted Hollins. He was also named by the P Factors two years ago as an Orlando living legend. He's on every scene. I still, you know, he was at President Barack Obama's inauguration taking photos. He's a man that's known all around the country. Let's give it up right now for the founder of this awesome organization. Come on, let's give him a standing ovation, Mr. Ted. You want to say something? Go right ahead. Well, I'd like to uh, say thank you to uh, all of the people who uh, supported uh, the Orlando Renaissance Writers Guild through the years. Uh, as you know, education, reading, writing, and math, as they told you, that's a step up. It's a step up not only yesterday, but today. And we want to continue to encourage today our, uh, our kids to continue to become more and more academic. Back in the day when we were going to school, uh, we were not afraid to get an A or B or a C. As a matter of fact, if you got below a C, you would get a D, and that meant dumb, and none of us wanted to be dumb. <laughs> now, I don't even know what, what they give the kids, but dumb, D don't seem to mean a lot. But we have to start encouraging our kids again to get those kind of grades that will make them successful, give them the kind of potential that uh, is gonna make them be great citizens, make them be great, help them be great doctors, lawyers, commissioners, and we got a couple of great commissioners in here. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Commissioner Ings. Uh, is he still here? Yeah. Uh, a great, 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 great commissioner. Uh, and uh, he, he's even commissioner out on, um, what? Uh, International Drive is okay. Yeah, he covers that area. Yeah, well. and I told somebody that uh, that I wanted to own this mall one day, so he probably gonna throw throw some <laughs> some jobs and commissions over here. So uh, we just have to stop. Think big, think great, uh, because uh, the future is is ours and it's unlimited. And if we don't participate, uh, then we won't make it to that next level, that next step. So we have to participate in, you know, going to these school board meetings, uh, going to, uh, even going down to the courthouse and, 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 and watch the young men go through trial as, as um, you know, the system tries to send them off for not being, being loving themselves and, and uh, trying to be confident in those reading, writing, math things. So this is why I start the deal because when I was going to school many years ago, uh, I would read a book at Dick and Jane, and Dick and Jane didn't come from the quarters. So <laughs> I wanted to know, I wanted to read about people like my uncle, Uncle Hugh and Aunt Gladys, and you know, so those are the people who inspired me. So, and when I got a little older, I was going to the Writers Club, nobody was talking about, you know, black people in the community who I always, who I always knew was great and had no doubt about it. 
And so, uh, so I said, well, let me write about me some, some black heroes. So I wrote my first book, uh, Saving Grace, about some black heroes, and they're and they are just going out all 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 over the world now. You got who Harriet Tubman gonna be on a twenty dollar bill. So we have to have that what that integrity, pride, and not being number two. Try to be number one if you can. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for coming, and we're gonna have a good program. I'm gonna not, not try to talk too much. Uh, and so next. Uh, we will have, who do we got next, Ms. Pam? We have it right here for you. Come on, let's give Ted Hollins another big hand. And why don't we give God praise for this, because this is absolutely incredible. Because back in the days, they used to say to us, as uh, blacks or African Americans, that if you put it in a book, don't worry about it. Black folk don't read. But we read now, and we write books. Come on, give yourself a big hand. So right now we're going to bring up, uh, well, a vocalist who's going to entertain us, and that's Karan Lee, followed by a poem by Kalania Chapman. Let's give them a big hand as they come, as we celebrate this anniversary. Not him. 
himself, then he is not to say the things he truly feels, and not the words of one who kneels, the record shows. to ask God some questions like why did this happen to me and when I don't hear him I ponder and keep guessing like is this all to life Lord can you not see I know that you are the Alpha and the Omega you are indeed the first and the last I believe in you God there is no one greater so why is it so hard to let go of my past I am not saying that I do not trust you, Father, because you have always brought me through good days and bad days when it was just me and you. But when it hurts so bad, I ask why even bother? Then I hear your gentle voice constantly reminding me of who you are and what I was created to do. Yet when life gets rough at times, I think your love isn't enough. Then you ask me, my child, do you trust me? At times I feel ashamed to say that my faith is sometimes shaken because of the mistakes I've made in the past. While others never forgave me, you did, God, are you mistaken? Your response is, my child, I am the first and the last. I sometimes wait for you to just throw me away for I know I am truly undone. No matter where I go, Lord, you continue to say, the battle, my child, is already won. Throughout the years, I fought and cried many tears, yet you never left me. Now I truly believe. Despite all of my faults and all, and all of my fears, yes, Lord, I will trust thee. I love it, I love it, I love it. Trust him. And now we will bring up another poet who will come to us now, Mr. John Study. Let us welcome John Study with another creative point on this evening. I started out a son, a brother, a cousin, raised in a two-parent home that was loving, became a teenager and got good at the dozens, left private school, public school, had me cutting, started dating a cheerleader, we were cutting, high school football player, triumphant, seven years after that became a young husband, seven years after that divorce made me nothing, all of a sudden my life had me bugging. Chest sunk in, shoulder shrugging, Lord, tell me something. I was standing at the Flatbush Junction. I received the unction, aim, call, and function. I'm moving forward. I'm going forward. Even if I'm falling, I'm falling forward. But I ain't falling for it. They'll call me forward. Keep moving forward even if you're looking awkward. Moving forward. Going forward. Even if I'm falling, I'm falling forward. But I ain't falling for it. They'll call me forward. Keep moving forward even if you're looking awkward. 
I used to be a vegan. Then I started beefing. Then I started chiefing. Then I started cheating. Wasn't good at creeping. Secrets I couldn't keep in. Everything has a season I took a beating. Everything has a reason I kept believing. Things were thrown my way of dodging and weaving. It's a miracle I'm standing here this evening. Thankful for the Lord and his leading. Now I'm teaching. Keep moving forward. Going forward. Even if I'm falling, I'm falling forward. But I ain't falling for it. Don't call me forward. Keep moving forward even if you're looking awkward. That's just one point. Peace, peace. Can I rock one more? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Black woman, do you think that I hate you? That I'm unproductive and can't be faithful? This is my house. You have to do what I say do. I never take time to let you know that you're special. I stress you. That's not the way that a real man does things. God is love. He gave me understanding. You think I'm too lazy to wash the tub? And if you go out with your homegirls, I'll probably bug but love. I'll be in the bed nice and snug. And when you come home from having fun, I'm loving you up. The children are fed. They're in the bed having a dream. The house is clean from top to bottom because we work as a team. I'm taking care of the rent, even a bill or two. I love the way you're raising our kids. I'm feeling you. Black woman, do you think that I hate you? That I'm unproductive and can't be faithful? This is my house. You have to do what I say do. I never take time to let you know that you're special. I stress you. That's not the way that a real man does things. God is love. He gave me understanding. God is love. He gave me understanding. God is love. He gave me understanding. Fasten your seatbelts. I'm landing. My coworkers' words were so flattering. I'm calling your phone, you're not answering. I got caught in a lie, now I'm panicking. Every time I do you wrong, I send you flowers. Then I take off and I be gone for hours. I can't front. I could call, but my priority is not you, it's football. It's all sports, things of all sorts. I should love you or leave you alone. Instead, we make love, I'm leaving you home. Go in your purse, take your debit card, and borrow your phone, come on. That's not the way that a real man does it. And you know he's not real if he doesn't want to discuss it. That's not the way that a real man does it. And that's not even your man if he won't hold your hands in public. You think that I hate you? That I'm unproductive and can't be faithful? Too playful, ungrateful? Can't wait to take you somewhere to rape you and take you if I'm able? That's not the way that a real man does things. God is love. He gave me understanding. God is love. He gave me understanding. God is love. He gave me understanding. Peace, peace. Thank you. Wow. 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 Such talent in the room. Let's give another big hand to Mr. John Study, as well as Kalania Chapman. Come on, for awesome work. As we prepare for this delicious meal, we will now have a blessing of the food by none other than LaToya Pritchard. LaToya. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads. I know you guys are ready to eat. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for just having us come together on this day, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come as a unit in unity, Lord God. We thank you for the talent that you have in this room, Lord. We want to bless the food, Lord God, and just ask you to help us nourish our bodies, Lord God, and eat the right things that we need to, Lord God, and we just ask you to bless the food, bless the hands that prepared it in this place. We thank you and we love you for everything that you've done for us and what you are about to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And as the people, as our ancestors would always say to us, good bread, good meat, good Lord, let's eat. Let's give a big hand for the first part of our program. And now we're, oh wow, that food looks absolutely awesome. We will hear instructions now as to how our tables will be served. Thank you so very much. Enjoy. We will have musical entertainment for you while your food is being served. Bon appetit. And uh, here's a song that I wrote for a, for my high school crush. Yeah, yeah. 
Grab a pen and paper so my words could shoot out like a vapor. I'm a poetry creator, a reality escaper. I can't begin to define the end of time in a rhyme, but that's fine. Can you imagine this surprise? Seeing the world through God's eyes, looking through a glass box, seeing everyone as you stare and glare. They know you're watching, but just don't care. 
you know everyone and everything for you are the ultimate king. I can't even begin as I see this world through sin. Bound to fight, I just can't seem to win. This earth spinning out of control, lost in darkness like a lost eternal soul. Imagine if time did not exist, seeing all the truth and all the realness. Would I ever be able to rest or handle the stress if I could see as far as the east meets the west? I obey, yet I continue to stray in dismay as I drift my separate way. If God were here, what would he say? So I pray every day and listen to what he has to say. If I were God, my words would shoot out like thunder. People would wonder and treat others like we treat our own mother. If I would just listen, instead of reminiscing and being stuck in a bubble, I would get out and fix all the trouble. Our hands weren't built for wounding, they were designed for healing, just like our hearts are made for feeling. Our bodies were designed to hold a grudge, just like our minds were not created to judge. Imagine being God for just one day. It must be hard watching this world waste away and decay, watching people stray farther away, unorganized and in disarray. I wonder exactly what God would say. He sent his son down here to earth. We murdered him, yet celebrate his birth. What was his life really worth? To me, it meant something. Yet to others, it means nothing. I could see God's bigger prints all over the place. My love for him gives me grace, yet I see him in every space. I can see him right now in your face. Amen. Y'all give another big hand to Gilbert. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. And this is a beautiful celebration. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying myself. Not only was the food wonderful, the fellowship was awesome, and it's just a great time when people come together and network from all different walks of life to make a difference in others' lives. But we want to bring up the caterers tonight, and you know, I was talking to the owners, and they are just excited about having the opportunity to serve you tonight. So I want them to come join me on the stage here, Terry and Renee Demings. All right, y'all, come on up. <laughs> Husband and wife and love and business is an unstoppable force. Y'all hear me now, right? All right. All right, double your pleasure with Double Make Gun. Hey, Superman and Superwoman. Y'all come on, give them a big hand. And I'd like for them to say something. All right. You know, um, we host events here all the time. And what we try to do every single time that we do it is put God first. All right. Amen. And then put the best food on the table. <laughs> and then let our staff be the most magnificent staff you're going to have anywhere. We are a small catering company and venue, but we give five-star service. And that's what we shoot for. This is my wife, the chef. All right. yeah. Tell you a quick story. My, my wife used to be an insurance executive, and I had this wild idea about 15 years ago to start a catering company, hired a, a professional chef to come in, and uh, she walked out on me one day, and the rest is history. My wife now prepares on average of a thousand meals a day by herself. I just put people around her. So it's all God sent. So everything that you had came straight from him. Amen. All oh, right. That is beautiful. Absolutely awesome. So y'all make sure you get their cards before you leave here. And, and they're great. They, they got great stock too. I, I don't know whether I, you get offended, but he is the brother of uh, our Sheriff Jerry Demings. And uh, we might one day become our man. We never know. Amen. He's looking at becoming, he's not made the decision yet, but I know he's looking at becoming the mayor of Orange County. So the bottom line is we just want to let y'all know that we're in the presence of some great folk up in here. All right? Come on, give them another big hand. Thank you. Thank you. And now as we prepare for our awards, 
for our Writers Guild organization, I'm reminded when I was growing up, I was always told by my father that it's so great to read and it's so great to understand poetry. And I never would forget, I was young, very, very young. I was probably almost 14. And I wanted to go on a date. And my dad met the young man and just told the young man I was too young to date. And he wouldn't let me go on that date and I got really mad with my father. And I'm reminded that all the time, whenever I needed inspiration, my father would say a poem to me. So on one particular night, after about three days of me and mourning and moping because I couldn't go on a date, he said, you know, you like corn dogs. You like daddy to go get you a corn dog. And I said, yeah, dad, go get me a corn dog. And that got me a little bit excited. I was smiling again because daddy was loving on me and everything. And about an hour later, there was a knock at the door, and I'm thinking it was my dad. And there was someone at the door saying, young lady, your dad has just been murdered. I felt so responsible. I felt that because of me being upset with him, he went to get the corn dog. But there was nothing I could do about it. It was just a bad situation in the area, and he ended up getting murdered. But one thing that was stayed on my heart and has lasted because everybody told us that we wouldn't make it. Everybody told us that my mother was left to raise six children in her 30s. My father was the breadwinner. My mom would go out every now and then a couple days a week and do a little day's work. But that was it. How are we going to make it? But we were reminded that prayer changes things. And I kept in my mind, and everywhere I go, I say this poem that my daddy gave to me. Somebody said that it couldn't be done. But she would have chuckled, replied that maybe it couldn't, but I would be one who wouldn't say no till I tried. So I buckled right in with a bit of a grin, and if I wore it, I hid it. And we started to sing as we tackled those things that couldn't be done, and we did it. There were thousands that told us it couldn't be done. There were thousands that prophesied our failure. There were thousands that pointed out one by one the dangers that went into a cell. But we buckled right in with a bit of a grin. And without any doubting or quitting, we started to sing as we tackled those things that couldn't be done. And with God's help, we did it. Y'all give a big hand to being in a position where you can do anything you want because all things are possible if you believe. So come on, if you believe it in your dream, give yourself a big hand right now. It doesn't matter what the naysayers say. It only matters what you believe. And if you believe it and God said it, you can achieve it. Oh, come on, give a big hand for him tonight. And now we want to bring up the founder, an amazing gentleman who's always on every scene. He's one of the most humblest men that I know that does so many great things. And at this particular time, help me, y'all, with the standing ovation. Come on, we can stand up for the magic. We can stand up for Beyonce. We can stand up for presidents. Let's stand up for this man who's helping us to put it in a book, Mr. Ted, Ted Hollins, the author of Saving Grace. Come on up, Ted. stage with him. All right? And I'm going to have the honor of escorting right. Mr. Ted Holland. Yeah! All right, Ted, we can step, baby. Y'all right. let him know the preacher step tonight. Saving Grace, come on up, nephew. This is uh, Dr. Andre uh, McNair, and uh, 
I want you guys to pray for him. You see, he has a lot of talent. And you know how our young people, what do they do? What do they call them, millennials or something? There you go. So we have to pray for our millennials. But he's going to be a great musician one day. Amen. All right. Miss Pamela. Yes, sir. All right. We're going to go on with our awards program. If you look through the program, you will see uh, who's coming up next. Yes, sir. And, and I think uh, Mr. Now, I won't call him Mr. I might get beat up. Reverend Jimmy Perry. take a righteous stand and um, about a year and a half ago I contacted Mr. Hollins and I said I, I got this book that I want to write and he uh, said I'll give you the best uh, writer and she, he said it's Dr. Ruth Baskerville and he gave me her name and I called her and she came to my house and my aunt met her and we went to work on this book. And in about a, a year and a half time, we came up with it and she cut it down uh, and said that it was so much information uh, that we'll just concentrate on the trial. And so we just concentrated on the trial and so that the book uh, centers on just the trial, and it was the largest trial in the USA history, and we found it in the National Archives. And it's in 1930s, and it's based on my grandfather's, and he testified for the United States government, and he was the key witness, and it was the first time a black man testified in the largest number of ICE went to jail for embezzling uh, some $45 million. And wow. you can find the whole story and follow it in the Atlanta Times of uh, the uh, writer, Glenn Covington, who's following the whole trial. And if you will buy the Atlanta Times, you will see the whole trial unfold in that newspaper. All right, that's would, awesome. Would, would you tell us about your, your, your grandfather friend? He, uh, my grandfather, when I was a little boy, used to get up every morning with booming prayers. And he would pray to the Lord every morning. And because of his prayers, I learned not only to pray, but put my trust in the Lord. His prayers were so passionate that I believed that God could do anything. All right. And I put such faith and trust in the Lord that it carried through my entire life. And because of that, this book was written. I believed that God could do anything. And so now when you get the book, you will see scripture throughout the book because God carried me through, he carried my grandfather through 
So when you read, you will see God's presence in the book. So get the book, it's 1995. My aunt has some copies of the book, but you can get it on um, uh, Amazon. And when you go on there, it's 1995, and you're in for a thriller better than a thriller in Manila. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Yes. 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 Uh, yes, Mr. Perry, uh, grandfather uh, was uh, one of the uh, individuals that money was stolen from. You heard about the black farmers of uh, Alabama, Florida, and uh, all up in the Carolinas where the government gave money for black farmers, but unfortunately the Europeans stole all the money. Mm. So uh, if those Europeans hadn't stole all that money, just look how far the week would be. Uh, instead of uh, continuing to try to prove ourselves as human beings. But uh, that is, it, it's a great story, and it's one of the reasons I, well, I, I'm happy that I persevered for 10 years to let people know uh, what has happened in the past. You know, a lot of our uh, neighbors, friends, and Europeans, they, don't, they have a short memory, and they don't want us to go back too far because they, they might find their grandparents back there. But uh, it's a great book. And uh, it, it'll help fill you with pride and let you see some of the, the tough, tough times that we went through. Thank you so yeah, much, yes, Mr. Perry. Yes. Uh, Thank you now. Yeah. And uh, Glenn, Glenn Covington said that. Uh, yeah, Glenn, Glenn Covington said she's going to write on the entire story and uh, all that the time. All right. All right. <laughs> Our next award will be presented to the Writer of the Year, Mr. Otis Winhoff. Wyndham. Wyndham. That's right, like the Wyndham Hotel from the Thompsonville Collection. distinguished guests of the Orlando Renaissance Writers Guild. I would like to thank the Writers Guild for my selection as Writer of the Year. As many of you know, I am a Mississippi boy, born and bred, and I'm the proud author of fic fictional works that I have created, the Thompsonville Stories, which honor my heritage. I'm sorry I was not able to attend this very important event, because of a prior commitment. However, I'm honored to have my fellow author and friend, Jill Capri Sims, accept this very special honor on my behalf. Writer of the Year, beautiful. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I told Otis that I would read that verbatim, but I believe in, because he is so humble, it's probably appropriate for me to share a few things about him as author. One, he is an avid golfer, and he happens to be in Colorado at, on a golfing trip right now. That's why he could not make it. But he's also an avid reader. His favorite authors are Walter Mosley and Stephen King, and he studies the techniques and the styles of writing. He's also a writer for the African American Golfers Digest. He's also a paid book reviewer. A companies hire him to review books and they pay him for that. He's a visual writer, so when you read his work, you'll actually be able to see a story, see a movie, see a television program. And by the way, he did not tell me or ask me to do this. I just felt that it was necessary to share it. Um, he was first prompted to write when he was in college because his English professor told him his writing was, uh, in French words or in a French term, garbage. That actually inspired him to write. He's passionate about creating male African-American heroes in his literary work, which he does quite vividly and uniquely. His books are both available today. And by the way, he wrote two books, he published two books 
in the course of 12 months. Um, the Thompsonville Collection Mystic Song of the Deep South, as well as Thompsonville Heritage, a Mystic Legacy. I actually do have some available. They each go for $10. I'll be at the back table if you'd like to purchase them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Come on, let's give him another big hand, Mr. Wyndham. South, you know, and if you want to go back in time and a little bit and, and, and see what you know, your grandparents uh, had done, Otis uh, books are, are great for that. All right. So our next award recipient uh, is none other than attorney Beryl McClary. Her book, Reasons Older Women Choose Younger Men. Beryl McClary. All right, she is married to uh, one of the members of the Commodores, and am I correct? That's correct. Uh -huh. And I know that they have been uh, working on a concert for uh, Congresswoman Corrine Brown, perhaps they're still uh, working on that in Jacksonville today. But let's give her a big hand in her ass. <laughs> Our next award recipient is Richard Huntley. And it's called Dark Days of Horror at Doja. Rapes, murders, beatings, and slavery. Let us welcome him to the stage for his special award presentation. All right, you ready for that walk? Come on, make that walk. All right. Hello. My name is Richard Huntley. I'm a native of Orlando, Florida. I'm also the vice Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> My name is Richard Huntley. I'm a native of Orlando, Florida. I'm also president of Black Boys at Dozer Reform School. We've written a book, um, Dark Days of Horror at Dozer, Rape, Murder, Beating, and Slavery. We wrote that book, four of us wrote that book together, but I'm spreading the story, I'm spreading the news all around, and I'm uh, looking for bookings also. Everybody want to hear this story, it's not a story, I call it my truth. But what we live through and where we are today, could nobody have done that but one person, and that was God himself. Thank you very much, and thank you for any time you come out to hear me. All right, thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Richard Huntley uh, has, a, has, has a great story. I mean, most of you from Florida uh, probably have heard of the, uh, uh, the reformatory school in, in Mariana. They call it the, the uh, Bad Boys. Yep. Uh, you know, they sent kids from all over Florida there. And uh, we just, since it had the word school in it, we just thought that's what it was, a school. But as Mr. Huntley described, it's more like a prison labor camp where you get young kids up there and they, uh, with the chop cotton and, and shuck corn and all that kind of stuff, and uh, you know help the economy out. Free labor is actually uh, like uh, you know uh, post slavery, and uh, so Mr. Huntley survived that. Uh, and you have to read the book or get. Uh, in front of him to hear that story. It's, it, it's, it's a full, full, full tearjerker. And so um, I'm so glad Mr. Huntley, Huntley uh, survived the, 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 the Mariana School for Boys. Oh, yeah. And able to write about it. 
Now, a lot of y'all say, well, I, I guess we got about 50% writers in here, and uh, we got some people nearing completion of their book, like my sister Gwen, uh, been, been, been great, uh, and I know some other people are working on uh, completing that book. So that's why we're here also to inspire you to write that book, because you want to leave a legacy for your grandparents. You know, my, my grandparent, um, she didn't she didn't write a, a, a book, but fortunately I got a chance to live with her. But I would love to get some of the stories, uh, uh, more stories. So um, thank you, uh, Mr. Huntley, for your work, and uh, keep on keep on writing and, and keep on trying to write things. You know, and uh, meaning that we have to encourage all our black men, women, and children. Uh, to actually do their best because it's, it's a lot of stuff that we have to go through day to day. Uh, we got a great president now and he reminds us of, us of that. Uh, so let's, let's have here our, our next uh, program. Our next awardee is none other than Donna Banks of Phyllis Diamonds. Come on up, Donna Banks. Hey, hey. Well, 
All right. Uh, also, Miss Morgan and I have an intimate affair. Uh, you may not. Yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 anyway, she 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 uh, helped uh, publish our first book. Our, 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 it's called an anthology. And so, you know, they call it birthing. So I just thought I'd take a little liberty with it. I'm not like Bill Cosby or nothing. But I tried to take a little liberty, liberties with it. And she helped uh, birth out first book. Comedian to me now. The mother of his first child. Yeah, the mother of his first child. Right, Ted. Y'all give it up for Suzanne Morgan. I love it, Ted. What else you got to say? Okay. We want to bring up Miss Winnie McNair. All right. Mr. Ted Hollins has a special recognition for you, my dear. Introduction for me that that uh, I, I kind of missed and I don't want to get a whipping. So would you would you read it? <laughs> special things. Some of us are not fortunate to have our parents to see the fruits but of the labor, but just give her another big hand to be able to introduce her son. Thank you so much for bringing Mr. Ted Hollins into this world. Without him, there would not be this Writer's Guild. Come on, give it up again for that beautiful mother. And now, at this particular time, Ted, we want to do some door prizes. Y'all ready for your door prizes? Woo! All right, let's get ready. We got. Okay. All right. Uh, we're, 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 we got acknowledgement We have acknowledgement and closing remarks, but before that, we have one more performance. All right, uh, Mr. Gilbert Sands, one of our Writers Guild members, who's been with us two or three years now, and. Uh, I'll tell you, he has some mind-blowing poems. Amen. I'm telling you, they come right from right from the spirit. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Um, this next one, for sure, I want to give out a uh, shout out. If Onyx Magazine is here, you guys have been on my radar for like over a year, so I want to give you guys a shout out. I enjoy your magazine. It's positive. It's it, it's everything. So I definitely. Um, you know, you know, I want to give you guys a shout out and, and I'm telling you, I'm a definitely a fan. This one is, this poem is part of my new book again and it's called The Love Game. Sometimes this love game makes me wonder, will I ever find a girl who loves me as much as I love her? When it rains, there will be thunder. As love 
pulls us under its spell. It's like living in a mental fairy tale. Only time will tell if demons dwell, living in an illusionary hell. We both get down on our knees and pray, just letting God's faith take our souls away. Like water flowing down the petal of a rose, connected together are two beautiful lost souls. The love game can be beautiful like a clear autumn's day, but it will only be that way if you learn how to play. The love game is known to swallow your heart whole if you let your emotions take complete control. The passion in her eyes as she stares at me, her love flowing through my veins relentlessly. The power of her touch makes me fall to a knee and eventually I will ask her to marry me. I waited so long for her to arrive. She bribes my path that God makes my soul come alive. In this game of love, you must take a chance by putting down your guard in order to find romance. Once our eyes met, I knew she was the one. Our souls united, seeking God's kingdom. The love game is one that we must play, but things don't always end up your way. The game of love can crash like waves in the ocean if it is controlled by pure emotion. Her soul gives out such a powerful glow, like the sun shining down and burning through the snow. The game of love can be dangerous at times if you cross those emotional lines through all the past heartaches that I had to go through. It was all worth it now that I found you. Love is just not a simple game to play. Let God guide your relationship every single day. In this game of love, you must take a chance by putting down your guard in order to find romance. Sometimes in the love game, you have to wait and see where finding a mate is your ultimate destiny. Love is something you can't force to happen. It is purely based on mutual attraction. Before I met my soulmate, I've had a long painful past. But once I found her, my life turned around really fast trying to test fate and find my soul mate, trying to find her love before I spiritually reincarnate. I would do anything for her, whatever it takes, and I've learned a lot through my past mistakes. The love game is something we all must play, and if you're lucky, you'll eventually find love one day. Yeah! Wow, you are incredible. Y'all give it up for Gilbert. Now that's the kind of love I'm talking about. <laughs> As they say that, love lifted me. Amen. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. We have another special award uh, tonight that we want to give out to another author. And I know Mr. Hollis will come and help me present this award uh, to none other than Mr. Rudolph Burke. But choices, decisions, and consequences. Let us welcome our next award recipient, Mr. Rudolph Burns. Yeah. Right. Well, good evening, everybody. Yes, good evening. I want to express my thanks and appreciation for this acknowledgement from September. Yes, I'm an author. I've written, I have four published books, as a matter of fact. And um, they are all spiritual motivation books. Except, well, one was a, a, a short biography of, called, the title was Perseverance from Jamaica to America. And uh, of my four books, all books has one commonality, one word, that is common to all four books. And that word is journey, because life is a journey. And the choice and decision we make on the journey will determine our final destination. So um, the book that we acknowledge is Journey of Perseverance from Jamaica to America. And I thank you, sir, and appreciate it. And I'm in the process of publishing yet another book. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Burke. He's been an EL member for at least five years. And uh, 
he, 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 I'm a little jealous of him because I only wrote one book and he wrote four. I got I got some in my drawer drawers. I mean draw. I mean. Yeah. Uh, let me. Yeah. Jay's a comedian. All right, now. all right. I got some under my bed. <laughs> all right. Uh, yes. So uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Burke, uh, for your contributions. Thank you, sir. All right, and appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Let me see who's going to get a picture. Get your photo. We're now going to prepare for. We're now going to prepare for our acknowledgments and our closing remarks. I want to thank you all again for allowing me to be your mistress of ceremony. As my friend Les Brown would always say, it's been a plum pleasing pleasure. I do encourage you, I have two books. My latest book is The Seven Principles of Overcoming Any Obstacle. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I give God the praise and the glory. They told me it would be three months and I'd be maybe deceased, dead, or whatever. Well, it's been 13 years, I'm still here, and planning on living to 120, amen? They're gonna be working all the way, so I challenge you. Uh, my book of Overcoming Obstacles talk about from business to childhood to every obstacle I've had to go through in life and continue uh, in my journey, as uh, Mr. Burke said, to continue to reach my destiny and complete my assignments. So as I close today, some of the principles in my book are the seven principles, the P factor. So I challenge you today to stay positive, stay passionate, stay persistent, stay patient, stay prayerful. You will be powerful and you will be prosperous. And I see all of you at the T.O.P. because that's where God wants all of us to be. God bless you and God be praised for you. Give yourselves a big hand. All right, we want to thank the Hope Doctor, Dr. Pam Powell, Dr. Reverend Pam Powell, for bringing uh, being our MC and bringing and bringing inspiration to us. Uh, acknowledgments. Well, uh, wow. Well, what what can I say about acknowledgments? Uh, it's just so wonderful to be able to survive this long uh, and have friends that support you. You know. Uh, for some of those of us who don't have big jobs, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a year, uh, a lot of people don't 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 uh, don't respect you that much. Oh, man. But anyway, I thank you for loving me and caring for me and uh, listening to my points of view on things and giving me the respect uh, that I probably didn't get a lot of other places. So I really, really appreciate that. I like to think uh, all the churches without this uh, without without our churches. Uh, this event wouldn't have been possible. I'd like to thank uh, Mount Pleasant, St. Mark, and the Hope Church. Uh, also, uh, if you look at our program, we got vendors, uh, Dr. Darrell Bars, uh, and uh, Miss Gwen Bennett, uh, On Point Media, uh, Roger Caldwell, uh, and I probably don't, uh, some people I don't see, uh, Mr. Uh, Randolph, Dwight Randolph, coming all the time and being a big part of this. And uh, Miss Donna Banks from the Daytona Beach Fresh Book Festival who supports us every year. She supported me before she even met me. Now, you know, I mean, that's great. I mean, it's, it's a great thing because I've been, I've been begging, begging um, for money for the last two or three months and, 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 and you lose friends when you start begging. I don't care how to be calling. Calling for, call for the support is very good. Especially if they support you one time. I gave you something last year. What you doing back this year? So, uh, so uh, it, 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 it's really a, really a big thing. Uh, uh, and I'd like to thank my Miss Corinne Wilson and her husband, Art. Long, long, long time supporter. She's with the International Black Women's Congress. Uh, if you want a great women's organization to be a part of, uh, they give great health seminars. They got give uh, people with PhDs in psychiatry and and medicine and everything. So uh, get her information before she before she leaves today. She's over at table number three. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And I 
I'd like to thank uh, Miss Marcia Williams for King and William Publishers and her daughters. Uh, 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 one of them, uh, Crystal, used to work for me, and the other one uh, was in school. Now she's out of school. Both of them are in college. Uh, and a lot of area, I guess I won't can't name everybody, but Earl Gray and my new friend, Miss Jacqueline Bryant. And uh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. All right. And we got the great Dr. Professor Mr. Carl Morrell of Workforce uh, Academy here in Orlando, and he uh, mentors us. Give him a hand, because he does a great job. He mentors kids, he keeps them in line, he beats them up, and he graduates them. So we have to give that man a great big applause, because I mean, he really, really loves kids and give them 100%, 100% in uh, encouraging them to go out and, and, and make something of themselves in the future. Uh, so it's been a wonderful, wonderful evening. Uh, my partner in crime for over 25 years, uh, I met her through uh, Miss Veronica McCoy of A1 of Florida Realty. And Veronica was one of the sweetest persons I knew. And uh, one thing I like about Veronica, she never lost friends. People would beat her up and and get mad with her, and and uh, she would always, uh, well, come on back, and then she would sell them something. So she was a great person. I mean, but she she was all about love, and I, uh, and so through her, I met the great Miss Gwen Bennett, uh, who I said when I met her the first day I met her, she didn't say one word. I said, well, what's wrong with that woman? And boy, the second day, nonstop. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Phoenix Group President CEO, Ms. Gwen Murray. Well, it's been a great evening. Uh, first, I'd like to say, because I saw a pen, and, I, and I'm like, you didn't say how to get your book. I mean, she has the two books. She deserves it. Uh, the, uh, acknowledgement of it. You can see her books on Pam Power, Pam Powell's In Powers. Uh, you can stop over the table, she'll give you the exact uh, website. But they are exciting books. You see, she's an exciting person, and we appreciate you uh, being our MC uh, tonight. Uh, you put a little spice in it, and that's always good. Uh, I, Ted always puts me up here because ever since we had the Writers Guild, uh, it's like, you know how they have elections and then they have appointments. I got appointed, I think, as the treasurer. I'm like, how did I get that? But anyway, uh, I, I, I like that opportunity because I've always been in finance. And this is when I say uh, to you guys that have been coming uh, to the Guild, that the Guild, does great work. And for years, uh, the Guild has been making donations to uh, youth organizations that promote literacy. And so more than ever, this is something we, get, we have to get back on target with because this is a new world and many of us are in a different generation. So it's our time to pass this on. When we were in school, and I know there's a lot of educators here, we learned how to read and write in a different method than they teach now. And I'm not trying to be critical of the teaching system, because I'm not an educator, but somehow or another, it's not working as well. I think sometimes you get over innovative. You know, I don't know what some teachers will say, you know, a lot of stuff is rote. You just gotta go over it and over, and you gotta learn how to spell and read by practicing and practicing. And I don't think they do that anymore. But anyway, literacy is key. And uh, Ted, you didn't get the envelopes this year. But what I'm asking you as the treasurer, we appreciate everybody 
coming to the Gill, having a nice dinner. But also, if you're able to give beyond that, it's always appreciated and just know that it goes to the goal of literacy for the youth. Not only through this project of literacy to the youth, but I encourage you all that are writers here from a certain generation previous to our, I don't know what they call the young ones now. I know we got the millennials. I don't know what the, what's the lower one? Anyway, the young folks. We have to pass our history and experience to the next generations. If you don't write it, people aren't doing so much storytelling anymore, and that's how we lost a lot of history before, because it wasn't written. So continue to write, and I'm absolutely excited that we had so many writers tonight. That was fabulous. And so I encourage you and thank you for coming and supporting us. Remember our literacy program so when you get the emails and all, it'll just be a follow-up of what we talked about. And what's, the, what's your motto, Ted, about? Write your story. Oh, write your story. Everybody got a story. Write your story and come back next year and pick up an award for being a writer. How about that? Good deal? All right. So thank you and uh, God bless. All right, well, we're going to close out, and uh, uh, we want to thank, a, thank a, couple, uh, uh, a couple of the ladies. This is uh, Miss Latoya. She's a graduate of Full Sail University. She's been very, very more than helpful during this period. Uh, we'd like to thank Miss Cheever, who came in and helped out. Uh, we'd like to thank all our musicians and poets, Dr. Andre, uh, Kalania. Brother Gilbert, uh, we like to uh, just thank all everybody that came out uh, to support us. Am I missing something out? I know I am, but like they say, if I did not call your name, uh, charge it to my head and not my heart. Some kind of way like that. Anyway, network with each other. Uh, if somebody came in the door and didn't see me, look for me. Uh, so, you guys go out, have a great summer. Go up to Washington, D.C. and uh, go to that big black museum they got up there. It's supposed to be very wonderful. Yes, enjoy. Go to your family reunions. And as I say, be simply engaged. Have a great night and a great rest of 2027. Thank you.